Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and today we're talking about pixelization in Grasshopper. So we're basically having this uh, like input curves that we defined here, and then we have a divider that divides them into like smaller pieces. And then also we can uh, adjust the factor of how close all those like pixelization things are still happening. Um, this will be like aimed at the beginners people, so it's very easy to follow and it follows like a bunch of math. And you can also download this stuff at the GitHub link that I provide down below. Um, so great, let's get into it. Cool, so I just start here with a new file. Um, I drew some, like, I would draw some curves, just one curve like this. And then we also will draw a polar line. And we just draw like a few lines as well. Just one like this, another one like here. It can be rather random. So the logic behind here is to first, I will draw this down here. We basically, we have our lines that are all random, right? And we will be defining a thing around it, like a bounding box, like that. This bounding box then will be divided in like smaller points. So like, like a grid, so it's gonna be looking like that. And then each point at the grid points, like those points here, has a distance to one of the point lines, curves, or lines. So then we will basically we will measure the distance, what will be in between those, and if this distance is um, bigger or smaller, so wait, um, if this distance then would be smaller than a certain amount, like two, let's say, then we say, okay, this point is chosen. Like, yes, okay? So this is basically the logic we are following this thing around. Good. So let's first uh, create this grid here at the beginning. So um, we're gonna go with geometry and then first right click it, set multiple geometries, mark them all, press enter and then we have them all in the grasshopper environment. Now we do a bounding box, this one here, and it's um, taking this content and it will make a plane around it. However, we want it all around one plane, not just all the single pieces at once. So we're going to um, right click it and do union box and this does exactly that. Good, now we also want it to be like a, to have a points that are gonna get all over this surface. There are several ways to do it. Um, there's one that would be um, divide surface and that would divide the surface like that. However, because I want to have a little bit more control about the things, we were gonna do this a little bit in a different way. So when I just gonna hide this here and we're gonna deconstruct this box and this will give us then a few values, the X value and the Y value. This will basically be our values for um, the points that we want to create on here. So we're going to create first a very simple point um, like construct point construct, whoops, construct points. And we will then be creating a range that will take those um, ranges that we have here and as a domain, and we'll, we will make also a step in between those. So this will then create all those different points between this and to all the way to the end. And we're gonna do the same thing with the Y direction here. Then we're gonna put those into the X and the Y coordinates. And well, it kind of does what we want, but it just also add diagonally. So we will have to graft uh, the Y coordinates. Great. Now that, now that we have that, we already have our very nicely 
laid out grid that we wanted to use. So we have to use the command um, pull points. And this basically wants to have the geometry and then the point um, that you want to use for that. So the point will be that obviously. And the geometry will be the beginning geometry that we put on there. And as you see, it will give us different points where they got pulled on there. Just to demonstrate that, um, we're gonna create a line and this closest point then will be created with this point. So you see from which this point basically comes from. This one goes here, this one goes there. Good. Now that we have, we are not only getting the closest point, we're also getting the distance. So um, we could, well, just to demonstrate that, um, if we take the distance here, those will be exactly the same numbers as if you would take the lines here and then put the, the, the length in here. It will be exactly the same thing. So it calculates it already for us. Um, and we will make a smaller than component, which will take a smaller number, or which takes two numbers. And if this number is smaller, then it gives me a true or a false. So in this case, I create something like that, a number slider. And then it gives us a list of true and false points like that. And in we want to basically only get the ones who are true. So we're doing the cool pattern and we're using the points that we had here and we're going to use the pattern here. And this then basically only gives us the points that are close to our places here. And this already looks pretty good. So let me just hide that and that. And you see, it gives us the points that are close to our uh, geometry that we, that we created here. Good. Now, now that we have that, we also want to create a rectangle around those points. So if you're just going to create a rectangle and put this in, you see it does do that, but it doesn't create the rectangles in a way that they're going back to back. So this we can resolve over here. So we're basically having this range from two, right? And if we're going to either we can do it like that. No, that's not the way to do it, but we should deconstruct the matrix first or the deconstruct the domain. And this then gives us um, for each range, two values, the start and the end points. You see like here, this one and that one. And what it basically does, if um, it's like from minus point, or in this case, minus point could, could be also could be a different point if you maybe, um, you know, move it more in the positive direction, you see then the starting point would be at a positive point. But in this case, it is actually by in a negative point because we were uh, around zero, zero. So that's where we created those curves. So we need to be sure that those points are positive because we want to divide the amount of points or divide the total length by the by the divisions we made. So with that, we can define each like piece of it. So basically we have this, this length, right? And we want to get this length here, like this length here. And then we are having the divisions already like that. And by just by dividing this, this whole length of X, by the um, amount of divisions we made, we're getting the length of each of those pieces that we created here. So that's what we basically want to go for. So now that we already have the, we basically have the start and the end points, but we have, have them negative. But if, if we just add them together like that, the value will be lower than the value that we had it in the first place. C was 34 and now it's just 20, 24. So in order to give us the correct values, we actually need to take the absolute command, which basically takes any value and if it's negative, it just makes it positive. So we do it like that, like here and there. And this then gives us a way higher um, value as far as I'm, as far as I know. 
so 43. Yeah, that looks quite cut, right, right? And we not only want this to have for the X dimension, but also for the Y dimension as well. Good, not done. Now that we have those two values defined, we want to, let me just move this a little bit up here. We want to divide this by the division that we defined here um, before. And yeah, in this case, we actually made the same, but it's fine. So we do the division and we divide this by the divider here and the other one as well uh, by the divider here. And this will then will be our X and our Y direction. So we just put it in the, in the X size and to the Y size. Oopa. And now we already have our very nice things defined. Now, what I'm a little bit unhappy with still is that those points are starting here. I want them to like start here in the middle. So we can do this by um, making a domain or there are other ways to do it as well. You could, for example, just move the points. But I think the more um, correct way is to do just a constructed domain that goes like half of this uh, domain, so 3.94, uh, but into like negative and positive directions. So we are creating a domain, so construct domain. And this domain needs, like in this case, here we have it like 3.94, so I want to be at half as that. So we can just put those con domain start and end in here, go on expression, and then for the start, we type in um, the negative of the value uh, divided by two. And we do the same for the positive. So it will be the positive divided by two. And this then gives us a domain that goes from minus 1.97 to plus 1.97. And we do the same thing as well with the X, uh, with the Y direction. So we just plug this in here. And you see it creates this very nice domain around the points how we want to have them here. Great. And the last part is just like a box rectangle. And we're just going to use um, the thing over here. Up, uh, the height over here, but the rectangle over there. And we're gonna, you're gonna create a custom preview as well to have it matching like we had before, but with the other color. Maybe let's go with white this time. Great. And maybe you also can do like a, um, still display the line so we can do deconstruct um, BREP like this. It's a little bit compute, compute intensive, but it gives us line outlines, which is maybe nice for you to display those things in like a um, boxy kind of uh, way. So great. Yes. So this already kind of did it for us. So and then we can obviously just play around the parameters the way we want and make it more or make it like um, less um, boxy or a little bit more, or we can just go around with it and have all the freedom we want in that matter, at least. So, um, yeah, thank you much for watching. I hope this helped you out. I was trying to make it as simple as possible to understand the concepts of how we are getting there. And yeah, if you need any more pixelizations videos, let me know and see you in the next one.